Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to our daily service. In just a few days, hundreds of students will arrive here in Oxford for the start of the next university year. I wonder how many of those Oxford University stu students know the motto for Oxford University, Dominus Illuminatio Mea, the opening words of Psalm 27, the Lord is my light. And the psalm continues, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I'll begin with a prayer. Loving Father, we praise you that because we know you through Christ, you are our light and our salvation. And may that truth be a great comfort to us and banish from us anxiety and fear. For your name's sake. Amen. In 1885, James Hannington was a missionary from England taking the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ to a part of Uganda that had never heard the gospel. The local king was suspicious, had him arrested, and in the last days of his life, when Han Hannington was very unwell and knew that almost certainly he would be martyred, as he was, he read the words of Psalm 27. He wrote in his diary, much comforted by this great psalm. I don't know what anxieties you've got at the moment, but I hope you'll find comfort too from Psalm 27 as we read together the first five verses. Together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. This week we're looking at some great words from the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4. And today we come to Philippians 4 and verse 6. Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I don't know if you've got in the habit of learning verses. It's a great thing to do. And the first verse I ever learned was this verse, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It was just before my A-levels. I'd just begun the Christian life, and it was a huge encouragement to me then. And it's been a challenge and an encouragement to me ever since. Do not be anxious about anything, Paul writes, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Could sound very glib, couldn't it? I don't know if you've had the experience of going through great difficulties and someone whose life seemed to be entirely relaxed says, oh, don't worry. It's quite hard to hear. You might think to yourself, it's all very well for you with your easy life, but I'm going through a very hard time. Well, Paul, as he writes these words, is certainly not glib. Because we know from what he says at the beginning of Philippians that he writes these words from prison. He may, in his understanding, only have a few days to live. He's on trial for his life. And yet he can say, do not have anxiety about anything. He doesn't just give a command, don't worry. He also gives the antidote, don't be anxious, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. Stress is very much a feature of our modern lives, is it not? I was browsing in a bookshop not long ago, reading various books on stress, and one management book on stress offered this key piece of advice. The writer says, I'm now going to give you a most important tip. Everyone needs an unconditional listener to unload on. Unfortunately, said the writer, no human being can be that unconditional listener. So here's my advice. Here's my tip. Talk to your dog. Well, what if we don't have a dog? 
And of course, when we talk to a dog, they might unconditionally listen, but they don't really hear us. They don't get us. They don't understand us. Paul has a much better tip. Talk to your God. He's the one who does understand, who does listen, who does care and has the power to help. So often when we worry, our worries just drag us down. They go round and round in our minds. They don't help the situation. They just make us feel depressed and out of control. And what we need to learn to do is to hand our concerns to the Lord. I wonder what you're worried about at the moment. Perhaps a new start. You're about to go to university. You just started a new school year, a new job. You're anxious. Or maybe it's not a new start, it's that you wish there was a new start. It's just the anxiety of the ongoing pressures of life. As the days get shorter and colder and you're worrying, how will I get through the winter? Will I be lonely? Will I get sick? Well, present your requests to God. Lord, I can trust in you. Help me to know your presence with me. Or perhaps your concerns are about your loved ones. Sometimes we can be most worried about other people. We're concerned for our family and our friends and our worries for them just keep going round and round. Well, turn them to the Lord. Lord, I can't control the lives of my friends and my family. I can't look after them as I'd like to, but you can. You're the loving Heavenly Father. Please protect and keep them. And maybe it's relational worries. We're worried what other people think of us. If they seem to like us, we think, well, they wouldn't if they really knew us. Having had a conversation, perhaps we go round and round in our heads over and over again. Oh, I wish I hadn't said that. What do they think of me? And that's the time, again, to turn our anxieties into prayers. Lord, help me to find my security in you. My love is absolutely secure in you because you love me more than I can begin to understand. Now, this advice certainly shouldn't leave us feeling beaten up if we still worry. Some things in life are really tough and it's not surprising if we keep on feeling worried. Well, let's keep on turning them to the Lord, not beating ourselves up when we feel anxious. Anxiety can, of course, become a medical condition. And if you find that anxiety has taken over and it's really cramping your life and making life very hard to cope with. Take medical advice and seek help, certainly. But through it all, let's keep handing our requests to the Lord. And do notice, it's with thanksgiving. So often if I just focus on the things I don't have or I'm worried about, well, that can drag me down. And what a change of perspective that can be when I remember the many, many good things the Lord has given me. So let's turn to the Lord in prayer now. And we're going to begin with a prayer of thanksgiving, the old general thanksgiving. Together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us be quiet for a moment. Let's bring our own concerns before the Lord, concerns for ourselves, perhaps for other people. Heavenly Father, who has taught us not to be anxious about anything, but to cast all our cares upon you. Increase our faith, we pray, 
and strengthen our resolve, that with a calm and courageous spirit we may meet all life's duties and demands, and know in daily experience your peace which passes all understanding. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we've turned to Christ, we're never alone. We have the perfect friend. So whatever we're facing, let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Do join in as we sing our song. Well, if you've never learned a verse before, this would be a great one to begin with. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. May you know the comfort of God's presence with you today. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>